Hi, this is Nolan from Benchmark, and in today's video, I'm just going to be giving you a quick rundown of the S321's web UI. So what I'm going to do to begin here is I'm just going to connect to my web UI. So I'm going to pull up my network options here, and you can see that I've already connected to a network with the same name as the serial number on the bottom of my receiver. And so I'm just going to head over to my web browser here and type in the following address. 192.168.10. I'm just going to enter that web URL. It's going to prompt me for a username and passwords. The username's admin, all lowercase, and the password's S321, uh, again, all lowercase. And I'm just going to enter that information. And that's going to bring me to the main page of my S321 web UI. So on this page here, you can see that I got a system mode that's telling me whether I'm in base, rover. Uh, if I want to take static data, I can stop, start it from here. I can start my base from this page. It'll give me position, um, what satellites I'm using, that kind of thing. Just all very general, generic information that can be useful to see. And I, once I'm done checking this page out here, I'm just going to head to the top right corner and click on settings here. This is where you can control the majority of the things your receiver can do. So whether that be the system mode, my data links, whether I'm using UHF network, that kind of thing, what constellations I want to use in my solutions, whether I want to automatically start my base when I turn it on or off, if I want to give my base uh, an ID, the position of my base, that kind of thing. I can also turn Athena log on from this page. I'll just link to a video in the top right corner if you want to see what that does and what you can do with that. And then if I go over to the second tab there, instead of working mode, just device configuration there, you can see that I can change my language on my receiver, my time zones, um, my link mode, my sensor. This is also where I can turn the speaker on. So if you are tired of hearing that voice constantly telling you you're fixed or you're floating, that kind of thing, you can turn that off here, which is always nice. I know it kind of annoys me in the office sometimes. You can also choose where you want to store your data here. So if you want your static data to be saved to an external SD card or just the internal uh, memory on the receiver, that kind of thing. And then you can also go to NMEA messages here and choose what you want it to pump out to a computer if you were doing some specialized work. Like we see a lot of guys use this who are doing UAV work and that kind of thing. Uh, and then the final tab here, satellites, you can choose to um, stop tracking specific satellites if they're giving you issues. Um, generally though, I, I would just leave all of these, um, the ability to be tracked. Once I back out of my settings menu here, I'm just not going to save anything, so I'm just going to hit cancel. So the information menu, it just gives you all the information for your receiver. So what firmware it's on, what the web UI version is, the sensor information, what radio version you're running, that kind of thing. So this is all very useful information if you're looking to update your receiver. And if you're looking for a how-to on how to update your receiver, I'll just include another link here in the top right corner. And then I'm going to head over to my download tab, the third option here. And it's within this tab that you can see here, I have a ton of points from static data I've just taken around the office here for other videos and other purposes and testing and that kind of thing. And I can download any of those points from here. And if you want to see a specific video on how to take static data and what you should do with that kind of data, I'll include a link in the top right corner here on how to take static data. And then if you look in the description, I'll include a video on how to use the Rhinex converter once you have that static data. And then the final tab here is the management tab. And this would be where you would go if you need to install firmware, like that previous video I just mentioned, um, or activate Atlas, or any of that kind of stuff. Or you can even view your logs on what the receiver's done. And that's all for today's video. I've just given you a quick rundown on what the web UI can do and where you can find different things within the web UI. And if you have any questions about anything you've seen in today's video or any of the equipment you've seen on our YouTube channel or website, please give us a call at 1-888-286-3204 or visit us on the web at bench-mark.ca.